gold to CRB ratio, and that also includes the silver to CRB ratio, just a little bit more wobbly, is about to have a golden cross, and the gold and silver prices are going to start heading a lot higher, a lot faster than other commodities. And you're going to see a lot of profits being booked by the miners, including our sponsor, Fortuna Silver Mines. Price target. Citigroup raises 2024 gold estimate to 23.50 an ounce and made a massive 40% upward revision to its 25 2025 forecast to 2875, it said in a note. That came after Goldman Sachs Group said Friday that metal was in an unshakable bull market, raising its year-end prediction to $2,700. So the banks are coming around a little bit late. It's going to be a lot worse than that. It's that we're going to head past $2,875. I think we're going to hit $3,000 this year and past it. Rafi Farber is the mind behind Endgame Investors and is renowned for his acute analysis and strategic financial foresight. Focusing on the broader commodities bull market, Farber believes that the impending golden cross in the gold to CRB ratio signals a forthcoming uptrend in gold and silver prices compared to other commodities. With the Commodity Research Bureau Index, CRB, up 13% year to date, the commodity market shows strong performance despite some sectors lagging. The remainder of the year will be critical to observe, particularly how commodities like gold continue to act as economic indicators. Forecasting the future of mining stocks, he anticipates heightened profitability as gold and silver prices surge ahead of other commodities. Gold stocks have lagged in part because production costs have gone up 35% since early 2020, mainly due to higher labor costs. This is one reason gold stocks will likely hit their old highs if gold moves a lot higher. But if the gold price rally continues, the miners will join in and rally. In his analysis, Farber highlights a bear market trend in the gold to S&P 500 ratio since 2011. As of early 2024, there's a notable uptick in the ratio, signaling a shift toward gold's superiority over stocks in a deflationary environment. On Monday, the price of gold was $2,330 per troy ounce, which is 13% higher than the price at the beginning of the year. The S&P 500, an index that tracks the stock performance of the 500 largest publicly traded companies, has also had a blazing hot start to 2024, gaining 9.34% to reach its current level of 5,215. Now, we present the clips of Rafi Farber's insights from his recent interview with Arcadia Economics. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. First slide I'm going to share here is that we've discussed the gold to commodities ratio, right? And I've said in the past, I think that was last week or two weeks ago, or maybe both, that we're not really in a gold or silver bull market quite yet. We're in a commodities bull market and gold and silver are moving on pace with the rest of the commodity complex. Well, we're about to have a serious breakthrough here on two metrics technically. This is the gold to CRB ratio. And you see here that the 200 week moving average is about to be broken through. The 200 week moving average here, uh, we see 8.16 and the higher this goes, the higher the gold price is relative to other commodities, meaning the more profitable miners become. So if you're waiting for the breakout of mining stocks, it will be when this graph goes uh, a lot higher. I think we could head to the old time highs of, what is it, 16, 15, something like that. We will get there. It'll take some time, but this chart is heading higher. So we have the 200 week moving average at 8.16 and we are now at 8.11. So we're about to cross in the last two, three times we crossed that when uh, we, cro we crossed the 200 week moving average was here, here and here and all three times the ratio headed a lot higher, a lot quicker, uh, and uh, we're gonna head there again. So if we go to another chart here, it's a very similar, it's the same chart, but it's a different indicator, a pretty similar indicator actually. This is the golden cross when the 50 week moving average heads above the 200 week moving average, that's considered a golden cross, and that is even rarer. It's, uh, it's pretty similar. You could say it happened here four times, um, but let's just say three. They kind of went tangent here. The blue line and the red line didn't quite cross. Maybe they did a little bit. So the last th two times that this happened was 2006 and 2015. 2006 was the beginning of a massive gold and silver bull market relative to other commodities. It was really, really big. Uh, we went from here about one, from a ratio of one to about a ratio of, let's say, five or so, so a quintupling really. And we're about to hit that again. So uh, the gold to silver, the sorry, the gold to CRB ratio, and that also includes the silver to CRB ratio, just a little bit more wobbly, is about to have a golden cross and the gold to silver prices are going to start heading a lot higher, a lot faster than other commodities. 
and you're going to see a lot of profits being booked by the miners, including our sponsor, Fortuna Silver Mines. And now the uh, gold to S&P 500, this is gold relative to the S&P 500, relative to stocks. We've been in a bear market since the 2011 top here. Uh, so that's going on 13 years, close to 13 years now. And it looks like we have a head and shoulders bottom here. Here's the head in 2021, 2022. Here's the shoulders in 2018. And now in early 2024, looks like February 2024, we've been heading higher. We broke above the 200 week and the 50 week moving averages here. We've poked above it several times here. I hope this is the last time we can start heading higher in a serious way. Uh, gold relative to stocks. So that means that stocks are going to start falling hard relative to real money, as they should in a real deflationary environment where everything becomes denominated in gold and silver ultimately. In the interview, Rafi Farber noted the disparity between gold's reaction to Federal Reserve rate announcements. Powell said Tuesday that it will likely take longer to gain confidence that price growth is heading toward the Fed's goal, remarks that followed a string of surprisingly strong U.S. inflation readings. The Fed chief also said, that giving the U.S. central bank's restrictive policy further time to work is appropriate. Treasury yields climbed to fresh 2024 highs, and the dollar rose after Powell's comments, while bullion held modest gains. For gold traders, Powell's remarks didn't break much new ground, although his comments suggested a May rate cut is off the table and June is increasingly unlikely. Swap markets show the Fed will only begin easing in September, after indicating July a week ago. Lower rates are generally positive for gold as it pays no interest. Farber stressed that higher rates typically result in a weaker dollar and increased gold and silver prices in a debt-backed economy, a perspective frequently ignored by mainstream sources. Furthermore, Farber delves into the gold-silver ratio and foresees a shift favoring silver in the final phase of the current bull market. He predicts silver potentially outpacing gold, reaching a ratio of 15 to 1. This change could be spurred by increased public awareness of economic dynamics and silver's affordability relative to gold. Let's get back to the interview. Mega banks, mega pump, gold price targets, but they can't even say the truth. Gold edges higher after Powell signals no rush to cut rates. Well, that's odd because the mainstream media always says that uh, higher rates or rates higher than would otherwise be, for example, when the Fed doesn't want to cut, that should lead gold to go lower and silver to go lower, but uh, not here. And they don't really uh, address that point. So it says Bloomberg here, gold edged higher as traders digested. Jerome Powell's comments signaling that the Federal Reserve has no plans to lower interest rates in the near term. For gold traders, Powell's remarks didn't break much new ground, although his comments suggested a may great cut is off the table and June is increasingly unlikely. Swap markets show the Fed will only begin easing in September after indicating a July, indicating July a week ago. Here's the key sentence. Lower rates are generally positive for gold as it pays no interest. Well, they can't even say or address the, the, the issue that the Fed is saying that they're not going to cut rates and gold heads higher anyway. The truth is when the currency is backed by so much debt, I think about 93% of the, of the dollar is backed by either treasury debt or mortgage-backed security debt, when you raise rates in that environment, 93% of the backing of the dollar gets cut in price and the Fed has losses and that destroys the purchasing power of the currency. In this environment, the higher rates go, the lower the dollar goes and the higher gold and silver go, but they don't address that. They can't even say it. We're wondering when silver is going to finally overtake gold. So we, uh, I've shown this from the 1970s. I've shown gold versus silver in the 1970s. So this is the gold to silver ratio in the 1970s. So from uh, about 1973, right? 1973 to 1979, right? Gold to silver ratio was stuck in a range of, well, let's say around 40, a little bit below 40, 39, 38, whatever that is. And when did it finally head towards 15 to 1 in the 1980 top? Well, that was beginning in 1979. We're about 40 here, uh, and we head to about 15 in 1980. So in the final year of the 1970s rally, that is when silver overtook gold. And that's what I think is going to happen now. In the final year of this bull market, which uh, I think we're either in or very, very close to, uh, silver is going to overtake gold pretty quickly, and we're going to head near 2015 to 1. And the last chart I want to show you will confirm this. Uh, this is the chart of silver in the 19 in 1970, just before the gold window was closed by Richard Nixon. May his memory be for a Nixon. I put a red line here where the average price of silver is in 1970. I eyeballed it, whatever. 
Uh, so let's say about 180. So in 1970, we know that gold was $35 an ounce. And 180, if you take that, it's about a 20 to 1 gold to silver ratio. So in the 60s, the 1970, 1971, gold to silver ratio was about 20 to 1. So that's where it is normally. So people who say that a 15 to 1 ratio is unachievable, no, no, it's pretty normal. And we will get there when the public figures out what is going on and they can't afford gold, so they head into silver. Right now, the banks are chasing gold, which is why gold is heading higher. And silver is heading higher too, but not really that fast because the public hasn't woken up yet. But when they do, the power of the public is a lot more powerful than the power of even the mega banks because there's like 6 billion people in the world and there's only like, I don't know, a handful of mega banks. And they don't really have that much money. They're bleeding and they're failing and you know UBS needs a bailout. So Yes, we are headed to a 20 to 1, 15 to 1 ratio, which is why I'm a silver stagger. It's going to be a lot more volatile than gold, which is why I also hold gold. And we've seen what happens when there is panic of a possible World War III end game scenario. Gold and silver go up, Bitcoin goes down. Will that happen in the actual end game? I don't know for sure, but it certainly seems that way. Several strategists in the gold space expect the precious metal rally to continue in 2024. And some even believe it could outperform all other commodities this year. As the gold to CRB ratio signals an upcoming move in precious metals, investors may find opportunities in mining stocks to capitalize on this trend. How will you leverage these market dynamics in your investment strategy moving forward? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.